How's it going, everybody? It's your man, Leonidas, a.k.a. Mr. Homebrew. Now, I wanted to speak to you guys in regards to downgrading and upgrading your Nintendo Switch software. Yes, there is a risk involved. To me, the risk is worth the reward. Now, this is under your own discretion if you're going to do this yourself. Um, I will include a micro SD card package in the next video or the previous video. Either way, I'll include a link in the description to that video with all the files um, to get homebrew running, RetroArch to get uh, your frame rate up in RetroArch is going to be included in that package with some updates. Um, the only thing I can't really include is the actual firmware files in regards to upgrading and downgrading your Nintendo Switch. You can find those online, no problem. Um, again, do your research, take your time. This is under your own discretion. I'm just giving a demonstration on how this is done. Now, my Nintendo Switch is on 6.2.0. Give the camera a second as you can see right there. Now, I'm going to take the time to power off my Nintendo Switch. Show du jour NX is what you use to actually upgrade and downgrade your firmware. I'm going to remove my micro SD card from my Nintendo Switch. I'll put it into my computer. Give it a moment. It says there's a problem with the drive. No, there's not. The drive is fine. I'm not going to stress that. Now, within my switch folder, I put the firmware folder, firmware 6.1.0 and firmware 6.2.0 on my micro SD card. You're going to have to find those firmware files online for whatever firmware you're looking for. Usually it'll be in a zip folder or a RAR folder. You're going to extract that into a, all the files and folders within it into one folder itself. My firmware that's my firmware 6.1.0 folder has all the files needed for the update. Now what you would want to do is copy and paste that onto your micro SD card. Again, I put it in my switch folder. That's where I like it. Once that's done, I already have 6.1.0 and 6.2.0 packages on my micro SD card. You're gonna take the time to eject your micro SD card properly through Windows. Remove it from your computer. Plug your micro SD card back into your Nintendo Switch. You're gonna to wanna to send the heat cake 4.5 made by CTC If you get that splash screen, hit the button again, or send the payload again, whatever method you're using. I have auto RCM, so obviously to get into RCM mode, I don't have to short out the pins on the right Joy-Con slot. Auto RCM is good for preventing fuse burn-in, so if you can use auto RCM, especially when it comes to upgrading and downgrading your Nintendo Switch, that'll allow you to have less problems say if you've upgraded when you downgrade you'll be able to go to sleep and your nintendo switch won't power off things like that i've heard a couple of things that people have been having problems with now once your nintendo switch is all booted up kind of like mine you're going to want to go into homebrew menu and you're going to want to go to choix du jour nx Load that up, and you're good to go. I'm going to go into my Switch folder, and I want to go downgrade to firmware 6.1.0. I'm going to choose that, give it a moment. It reads the micro SD card. I'm going to select. Actually, it scans all the files, make sure there's no errors, which is a good thing. Then I'm going to select 6.1.0 EXFAT. I want EXFAT. So I'm going to select that. You can also do 6.1.0 without EXFAT, but why not? Once you've done that, you're going to hit select firmware. Give it a moment. Checks everything over. And then 
Once you're at that point, you can start the installation. Give it another moment. It's gonna finish everything up. Shouldn't take too long. Fairly easy process in the end. Give it a chance to finish everything up. Don't rush it. Make sure you have a good amount of battery when you're doing something like this. I'm gonna emphasize again, make sure you have a good amount of battery. I'm close to 80%, so I know if anything goes wrong, I still have a Nintendo Switch that does have a lot of power. You should be doing a NAND backup as I've described in my previous video and cut and paste those files just in case anything ever does go wrong. There you go. You go to reboot. Shut down. Send the payload, it's easy enough. Give it a chance to boot back up. Then we'll verify that we are on 6.1.0, as I said. We were on 6.2.0, as I showed you previously, early on in the video. Now I'm gonna go down, settings. You're gonna see I'm on 6.1.0. Now, if I wanted to, I'm gonna go back in the homebrew menu, go to Choy Du Jour, NX. I also have the package file for 6.2.0. I'm gonna go to my switch folder, my firmware for 6.2.0. I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna let it scan it. Found all the files, no errors. I'm gonna do 6.2.0 with EXFAT. Give it a chance. Confirm everything is good to go. Analyzing. Select firmware. Let do a little scan. Bang, good to go. Start into installation. Prevent fuse burning. That's what auto RCM is used for. Now, if you're using auto RCM, you are going to have to send a payload, be it to get into stock OS or into CFW, Atmosphere, whatever you're using, um, because it does corrupt the boot. Here we go, almost done. Fairly easy, as you guys can see. Not too long. Did this all, got it all done within a couple of minutes. You know, got everything set up. Target firmware, 6.2.0. Let it finish up, everything's good. Reboot. Shut down. I'm gonna send the payload. Give it a moment to boot up again. And we should be back to 6.2.0, just like that. So we went from 6.2.0 down to 6.1.0 and then back up to 6.2.0, all in one video. Just like that, your man Leonidas, aka Mr. Homebrew. I'm sorry I can't provide the firmware files. As I said, the micro SD card package, which is gonna have Choy de Jour and everything to get Homebrew running, RetroArch, and even for everybody who knows already, it's also gonna include better frame rates for RetroArch and N64 and all that good stuff. Now to confirm one last time, real quickly, we are now on 6.2.0, good to go, no question about it. I hope you enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification icon slash bell. This way you can stay up to date for all the live streams, all the new videos, always keeping you guys up to date, staying safe. And one reason why I didn't rush and I don't rush on the 6.2.0 update and the methods to be able to get homebrew running is because everything wasn't good to go. At this point in time, I do say that 6.2.0 is good to go. You can run homebrew. RetroArch is good to go. You can have fun. No questioning about it. All the best. What's going on, you guys? <laughs> yeah. And just like that, take care.